We are back in Botswana, an amazing place. Stay tuned as I take you on this series into the Okavango Delta, the Ngaipan area, and then onwards to a place I've never been, the Tuli Block. I'm really excited to bring you this adventure, so stay tuned and enjoy as Ed and I get out there and experience the wild that is Botswana. Welcome to Snamatela. We've just come off of the cut line. Picking up from episode 1, we head out of the Moremi Game Reserve and make our way towards the town of Maun, known as the Gateway to the Okavango Delta, and then onwards to the Ngayapan National Park, passing through the small villages of Moseja and Makalamabedi. Bit of a welcome relief, we are now on the tar road, just did the all important tyre inflation. The really nice thing with that Indiflate unit is that it balances and levels out the two tires that you're working with. So one tire might be at 2.4 and the other tire might be at 2.3. Well, it levels that out, so that's quite nice. And I, I tell you, after, I mean, that was quite a tough drive this morning. It's now quarter past one and we left at eight o'clock in the morning. So that's, that's a tough drive. But beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, so many ecosystems that we went through. And yeah, quite a bit of water still on the road, but it looks like it's drying up. We're heading into Maun now, and just gotta refuel, and get a couple of odds and sods, and then we head out to Ngaipan. I think we're gonna get there quite late, if I'm honest, but it's an adventure, and we're absolutely enjoying it, absolutely enjoying it. This is a 262 kilometer distance to travel from Southgate campsites in the Moremi and will take a good part of the day to do, depending on stopovers and the conditions of the off-road sections. Remember that traveling southwards from Mount to Ngaipan, you do cross the Makalamabedi veterinary fence, so traveling with meat could be a problem. We have just pulled into Ngaipan and um, it's very, very hot. I don't know what the temperatures are, but yeah, it's cooking, eh? So, one of the really nice things with the Indy Flat unit is just how quick it is. So, I mean, this used to be a big schlep for me. It's no longer a big schlep. We've got old Ed in the background letting down his tires, also using the Indy Flat unit. And, yeah, geez, just smart and convenient, I reckon. Yeah, let's let that air out. We're officially in the Ngaipan National Park and it looks absolutely stunning. Stunning, stunning. It is just, we got large cumulonimbus clouds building up, but I tell you, it is outside and I chose to stay inside for the aircon. It is so hot. I think it said 43 degrees Celsius. And if that's what he did say, then I'm, I'm gonna say 48, eh? close to 50. And the thing with the Ngai Pan, the Makhari Khari Pan's uh, salt flats, the sand is white. So, you know, you get sun from the top and sun from the bottom because it reflects off. But what a day. I mean, who would have thought we'd be in the morning at Third Bridge in the Okavango Delta, and today we'd be in the Ngai Pan. Two totally different places, two totally different ecosystems and each in their own right, very, very majestic. A long day though, a very, very long day, and I'm, I'm feeling it a bit, if I'm honest. So, yeah. Thanks, my man, I'm ready. But let's kick it, let's get to Southgate. 
driving the main dirt road to the Southgate camp has to be one of my favorite drives. This is a 22 kilometer stretch that is simply something else. The sky, the open plains and the undulating roads will leave an impression on you. But today, well today we get greeted by a sight that I will never forget. Simply put, a Botswana welcome like no other. The elephants in this area appear to be a lot whiter than the elephants in other parts of Botswana. This is because they use the mineral rich white sand as a covering against the sun. This waterhole is found just before the camp check-in gate and would become part of our daily visits on game drives. After a long day on the road, we head for camp, where we would be spending the next three nights at Campsite 8. Shattered and knackered, we crawled into bed and slept with the sounds of lions roaring in the distance. Good morning. Uh, we woke up on five o'clock this morning, or oh, half past five, I can't remember now. And the time now is half past six in the morning. Made coffees early, and we are driving the Ngaipan game routes. We heard, we heard lion fairly early, half past four in the morning, and they sound very close. So. We're making a beeline for the pans, which have got water in, and hopefully they're there. We'll see. Yeah, but they didn't sound too far. If anything, maybe three kilometers, maybe four. But I tell you, this morning it is really, really pretty. The sun over in our pan is just Oh man, fantastic, eh? Golden. Take a look at this. Ngaipan National Park was originally state land. This area is 1,676 square kilometers and was declared a game reserve in 1970. And then in 1992, the boundaries were extended to include Baines Baobabs to give the total land area 2,578 square kilometers and national park status was granted. The Ngaipan National Park is basically a salt pan and after a good rainfall, water flows into the pan and on the grass country. 
The way into the pan should be traveled only by a four-wheel drive vehicle during the rainy season or a high clearance vehicle in the drier months. The Nlaya pan has been formed by a process that have begun more than five million years ago. At that time, the Okavango River, the Chobe and the Upper Zambezi flowed along somewhat different courses than those of today. Travelers are always struck by the immensity of sky and horizon of the Botswana landscape. Added with the wildlife viewing possibilities, this area has become a favorite for overlanders to visit. And on this trip, we clearly understand why. Just to think, the Ranger and its Land Cruiser 200 series are almost eight years old now. And these old girls have racked up over 140,000 kilometers each, respectively, of what has to be some of the best adventure overlanding trips you could imagine. It goes without saying that the trips in these two beasts has been an amazing journey. Our advice, you don't need all of the fancy gear, but it does help and goes a long way in making your adventure that little bit easier. With high temperatures, we seek shade back in camp. So the triple five unit, this thing has actually been a really big savior on this trip for me three times. One for the fridge, two for the computer and being able to dump footage and three to charge my gear. I've had a couple of power issues where I've gone really low on the 108 amp hour in the back running that 500 watt Victron pure sine wave inverter to run the fridge. So this little unit here, the triple five, gives you 500 watts of pure sine wave power and yeah it's just a gem really on a trip like this it's a great backup to the backup for the backup but yeah just dumping some footage There are seven pans or water holes throughout the area of the Ngaia Pan. The main ones are borehole fed and serve as reliable sources of water for animals during the drier months. Seek these water holes and you will be rewarded with great encounters. The bird life during the month of March is simply stunning. But the elephant viewings on this trip were just something else. Botswana magic comes to mind over and over again. It is so, so, so hot. And we've just spent, I think, two hours at this waterhole right by the 
a main entrance to the Ngaipan South Camp. But what an absolutely magical experience we just had. We are, I literally had a bull elephant right here. And I don't know if you can see that. That's two meters. He just walked right past here. Big, big old boy. Spoiled, eh? In Botswana, you get absolutely spoiled, and the elephants just continue to come out of the bush. Another hard day in Africa as we make our way back to camp and prep for the night's activities. Ryan, what's happening, mate? We're here at Ngapen, campsite number eight, but very, very magic. We've just had two jackal come into camp, one literally five meters from us. I think he was looking for some chow, and then his mate or his buddy came in over there, maybe 10 meters from us. Eh? She looked like she hit a mole or something in the bush. But yeah, man, it's, it's wild, wild, wild here but absolutely magic. And being at campsite eight, you're far away from anyone else. So I really, really like this campsite, but you've got to be vigilant, eh? You've got to be moving your head on a swivel. It seems these jackals are used to being fed in camp. Please people, refrain from feeding animals in camp. Whilst it might be a great thing to have them close they become easily habituated and as a result could become regarded as pests. The end result might mean death to these animals, which is not what anyone wants. Sure. 
that is very close, very, very, very close. I'd almost say even like campsite 10 close. That's right here, right here, that line is right here. I've been trying to wake old Ed up, but he's got that fan on, which is a, doesn't allow him to hear anything. <laughs> Wow, amazing, man. It's gotten very cold, very cold. Tonight's cold. And I'll see you in the morning. He's here at number 10, bro. Yeah, he's right here at number 10. Hey, what's going on, bro? There's a lion right here in the next campsite. And it's, I think, in campsite number 10, which is where we camped last time. So it's, it's half past five, which means we can get up and drive. So how are we gonna go and find him? She's just in this campsite here. He's going off magic. Just pulled up to the ablution blocks and uh, look what's here. Yeah, so wow, wow, what a morning. Um, we were up at four o'clock, quarter past four, and um, we woke up to this massive male lion going off and we thought he was, it seemed like he was 80 meters, 200 meters from us. So we got in the car by half past five and we were on the road and it was pitch black and we saw him scamp off into the bush a big 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 male light only the one of them and um what it seems he's done is it seems he's gone in maybe a k up the road and he's gone all the way around and now he's in the bush directly behind me and I, i'm gonna say again 800 meters in the bush amazing eh absolutely fantastic that'll get the blood going that's for sure but yeah, we reckon he's gonna go to the water hole here at the gate. So, gotta get moving.
The Nlaipan area serves as a migrational route for both zebra and wildebeest. And on this trip we seem to have found this at the tail end of their migration. But in saying that, one can still appreciate and view the other creatures. So to get you up to speed, uh, we went out for a game drive this morning and we were tracking or trying to find those, those lion and unfortunately we came up short but they're in the area definitely, they weren't too far away from us. We got to a water hole, I think it's pan number seven and we switched off vehicles and we heard them roaring, I don't know, maybe 800 meters from the pan so we went too far but we think they were in the deep bush we're driving doing our afternoon game drive and seen some massive elephants so, and you know the beautiful thing with Ngai Pan is because the soil is white all the elephants here are white elephant and um, the contrast between the blue skies the green grass and shrubbery with these white elephant are oh, just uh, absolutely stunning so so beautiful the drive is going well but I have got to tell you again and I just can't say it enough on this trip I seem to be battling with heat 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 and something really interesting is what I've noted is that if you get to 45 degrees Celsius well, the lithium 108, it struggles to take charge. It sort of says it's on bulk charge, but it's, it's, only, it's only pulling in maybe two, three amps, if that. So yeah, massive lesson there learnt, I reckon. Uh, I don't know how, how to solve it. I don't think there is a solve, if I'm honest. I just think that with great heat, the lithium will battle. I think it prefers the cold. But it carries on charging, just a nice slow trickle charge, so that can't hurt. We're trying to find pan number one. Um, we remember it from our last Naya pan trip. Yeah, we had great sightings of zebra there the last time. But guys, it is so hot. I have got to put the aircon on. Man, it's hot. Eddie and I are just having a nice cold beverage on the pan here at the water hole. Nye pan? Water yeah, hole number, number one. Number one. Just I'm number don't, seven. No, number one. Mama and I said Another number one. Mama and I, I called that one number seven already. I already told called this one number one. Okay? No, you didn't. Mama and I did. I, did. I just told you not because you didn't no, try no, to no, jump no, in no, on no, my no, picture. No, 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 no. Black winged pranticle. You heard it here first. I went into the, the Robertson's know Bird know Book it's and I it's Robert's it's Bird Robert's. Book. Yeah, it's not even right. You can't even get Robert's right. <laughs> Robert's Bird Book and uh, a black winged pranticle. We think it's the one that the more common one because we can't spot the freckles. 
but there's quite a few of them. hijack my birding knowledge? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sitting with the birding guru here. I'm just kidding. Obviously, Ed knows these birds. He says they fly in from Europe every year, and this is part of their migrational route. And uh, we reckon after the rainy season, they'll head back over. And um, Brian lovely. can't even, when he says black wing yeah. pentacle, all he sees is dots in the sky. <laughs> That's all he sees. <laughs> Too true. I need to go and get my glasses sorted out, but I can't afford it. Yeah, but yes, absolutely magic out on this on the pans here at nine pan pan number one. Wild encounters in camp, magic. The Ngaiapans area always delivers, and even though we didn't see any of the cats, we still had memories made special by this truly magic spot. Our last night sees us get prepped and ready for the next part of the adventure, where we head for another favorite of ours, Bane's Baobabs, but I am worried about the heat. Brian, what's happening? Uh, we're just stopping off at the ablution block quickly. We've got to fill up old Earl's 130 litre water tank and then uh, yeah, hit the road to Bain's Baobab. Looking forward to it, it's going to be magic. is the ultimate test for your setup. How's it coping? 
it's 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 coping fine but what i have learned is that the lithium batteries they just don't like heat what i mean by that is anything over 45 degrees celsius if it's contained in a box it doesn't like to take thorough charge it just trickle charges so it'll go from within like say two hours it'll go from like 43 to 48 and then sit at 48 and then bump up to 52 as the temperature dips and dives so yeah just interesting i find the whole thing interesting but otherwise man. so south camp no pan what a beautiful place to stay look i think i think three nights is a good number of nights to stay at a place like this and be wary the temperatures and UV index are very high at Ngaia Pan. Absolutely. I mean, it is incredibly hot. And um, remember that at 3 o'clock in the morning, it does get a bit cold. Got a bit nippy last night. And uh, great to be woken up by that male lion roaring very close to camp. We're on our way. Let's enjoy the adventure. It's day 10 and Ed and I are loving every minute of this adventure. Leave a comment below if this is a trip that you have done before and what did you think of this area? We are on the pans and it looks dry but don't let that fool you what happens on the salt flats is is a crust and that crust is about two inches thick not in all places but in most places and you can walk on it and it won't break but as soon as you drive one of these heavy vehicles on it that's it it breaks through that crust and underneath is black cotton soil and that black cotton soil well that's how you get stuck and not just stuck proper stuck so just be very careful as soon as you feel your vehicle begin to break through the crust you need to either turn around immediately or reverse out immediately just don't take any chances on the Mahadi Khadi pads that's for sure Oh man, my phone cannot connect to the Victron unit because it's overheating. It is so hot. I think if yesterday was 50, today is 150. So literally you can cook an egg on the bonnet. Absolutely. It's hot, eh? Bain's Baobabs has a very spiritual feel about it. And this is a place that for some reason I keep finding myself drawn to. But arriving in the middle of the day and having a few snacks during lunch, we make a trip to our campsite, campsite number two, which is a campsite with baobab trees on either side.
how special is this place, bro? Yeah, I think that's why we keep coming back here, mate. It's very special, eh? We, we keep saying it, and... Uh, I think those people that come here, they get it, and they, they understand. And those people who want to come here, they will understand. It's just... Um, I mean, look at that sunset, mate. You know, it's just special. Vast open spaces. In fact, the whole trip really has been absolutely magic, eh? Today's temperature, though, uh, we're going to have to have a word with someone because 50 degrees Celsius. 50 degrees Celsius. Um, but yeah, man, I think all these places we get to go to, we're just privileged, hey? Privileged, we enjoy, we try and make the most of them. And we hope we're bringing you some really good content. And if we are and you enjoy the channels and the shows, well then, come to these places. They're amazing, absolutely amazing. So we've walked out to the pans, we're quite, quite a way away from the campsite, which is not illegal to do. You can do it, you just gotta be very wary. But we wanted to come out here because we saw, we thought maybe someone else got stuck here. And instead what we found is elephant tracks. And this poor elephant must have had a really, really tough time in this mud. Have a look at this. Look how deep its footprint went. Now, if that's not an indication as to just how dangerous the pans can be, well then, you need to think again. And I can show you. So it feels hard underfoot, maybe a bit softer than the stuff we just walked on. But have a look at this. And there's the wet stuff. So two inches crust, and then you hit the clay. And that's the stuff that'll get you bogged down, that's for sure. So be cautious, like we always do. Stay on the main tracks when you're out driving any pans, any salt flats, in any place. But more so in the Makarikari pan and greater area, my pan included. Stick to the main tracks. But yeah, what a sunset. And I've got the short lens on, so we just saw an elephant walking across from one pan to the other. Beautiful. We slept in this morning and we are now on our way back to Baines. We've got a bit of content to shoot. And um, yeah, I'll tell you what guys, yeah, very hot. It's half past 10 in the morning and I think it's already at 35 degrees Celsius. It's so hot that the bees are coming in and drinking the leftover water that we use on Ed's trailer. And um, yeah, they, they gathered in the hundreds. So we thought, oh, let's just get out of campsite and go for a nice drive, charge up the batteries and uh, sit in the air conditioner. So what we've been doing is Ed's got this little spray nozzle on the back of the Echo and uh, we spray ourselves down with water. And I tell you what, it is an absolute game changer phenomenal just how nice and cool we get after spraying ourselves with water there's some hem spock out on the pans running all the animals this year seem so skittish hey i don't know if it's got something to do with the cattle posts that are dotted around the Ngai pan area or what I, I don't know but yeah the game seems very skittish on this trip but anyways let's get to baines A hot day out there grabbing content out on the pans and with the clouds building up we hope for rain. With the 
rank trying to build up and failing on our immediate horizon, a slight drizzle begins. We've spent two nights here at Baines, and as a great place as it is, I for one was very chuffed to evade the heat and make tracks for a new destination that I've never visited before, the Thule Wilderness Reserve, situated on the eastern side of Botswana with the Thule block surrounding it. I can't wait for this one, as we get to experience a bit of luxury in what has to be Botswana's best kept secret. Day 12, we head for the Thule Wilderness Reserve, some 682 kilometers from the Baines Baobabs. This would be a tough day's drive that would take us a good nine hours to do. Stick to speed limits and you will be safe from the roadside cop and avoid the many livestock crossing the roads. We arrive at the Thule Wilderness Reserve late afternoon and drive into the small and secluded bush campsite called Mojave Campsite where we would be spending the next three nights. Thule Wilderness is owner managed by Stuart and Julie Quinn, who are absolute legends. A massive thank you to them and to our mates from Epic Africa for inviting and treating us to a little slice of heaven mixed in with insane amounts of luxury. Time for feet up as we explore this area, an area I didn't even realize was as impressive as it turned out to be. To quote from the Thule Wilderness Reserve website, the unfenced Mojave Bush Camp is rented at a daily self-catering rate and one has exclusive use of the entire camp, irrespective of number of persons but up to a maximum of 10 people. Guests can upgrade to a fully catered at an additional cost. The camp offers accommodation in five units overlooking the dry Mojave River. Two of the units have ensuite bathrooms, whilst the three units share two outdoor communal ablutions. All ablutions have flush toilets and hot water showers. There is no electricity, so lighting is provided using gas, paraffin and solar. Shower water is heated by a solar geyser, and the cookers and freezers are gas operated. There is a central LARPA or dining area with a fire pit as well, as well as a small splash pool. The night sounds heard at Mojave are magical, and games such as elephants, lion, brown and spotted hyena, civet, genet and African wildcat may possibly be seen in and around the camps. The Mojave River is a hotspot for gay movements and the remoteness of this camp ensures that you will truly feel that you are in the deep wilderness in this unique and special place. Waking up early morning, we head out with the head game guide, Big Joe. Now, whilst this isn't my preferred thing to do, 
I have to say that it was a truly magical experience visiting brown hyena dens and listening to the wealth of knowledge that Joe has to share at every corner. It was a magic change of pace and something that I could get used to. Um, maybe not, but what an experience and what a privilege it was to share in this adventure. The Tuli Wilderness private and exclusive 24,000 acre concession of Botswana Wilderness makes an ideal getaway or stopover point for travelers between Botswana and South Africa, as well as a unique and true South African safari experience for international guests. The reserve forms part of the Transfrontier Park between Botswana, South Africa and Zimbabwe. This means that wildlife can flow freely across borders into neighboring countries. But what that actually means is that the Thule Wilderness Reserve has a good population of both elephant and lion entering and exiting the reserve constantly, forming new and important biodiversity highways that create valuable ecosystems that are very unique to this area. Okay, um, that's where we start to walk, guys. Um, we walk in single file, and we give in space in between. Don't trip your. We are walking to Eagles Rock, and uh, all the party involved look a bit nervous because it's quite far, and I'll show you how far. It's all the way over and there. So yeah. With the hiking boots on and ready to get thirsty. Very thirsty. The bush looks amazing. Absolutely fantastic. I'll show you the view when we get there. Look, this is a wild walk. So, Joe, our guide, he's armed up with what looks like a 306. There are lion here, and um, leopard are not uncommon sightings. And after that sighting we had this morning, well, safe to say, we all believe him. Yes, we can sit. But nice to get the legs stretched and working. A status report. I think we've only walked 300 meters. And we begin the ascent. So we gotta go. And then we gotta go over there. Good fun.
getting a bit hot now. I know some people that here. Coughs are beginning to burn. I mean, it's not hot. It's rock. I can't tell you how hot it is. Wait. Good. A pit stop never hurt nobody. It happened. Back to it. I've been advised to tell everyone just how hot it is. Des, how hot is it, man? It's as hot as hell. <laughs> it's, maybe it's 37, it feels like 57. It's fucking mainly. But we're making good progress. So beautiful up here, man. The bush. From this height, Rex, so green there on all these hills. The Tule Wilderness Reserve looks fantastic from up here, hey? Such a unique um, environment, man. All these hills and a nice river that runs through them. Absolutely magic. Actually quite fascinating this walk. Our Joe's just told us that there's a settlement here that's from 1100 to 1500 BC. And uh, behind me, you see that wall over there? Sorry, I'm holding my camera in the other hand, but that's an archeological build from around then. And this tree here behind me, that one, is rated to be thousands of years old. It was planted when the chief used to live here, and apparently the chief used to live up on the top. There's two grave sites here, and what's really fascinating is that Joe was saying there's three Mapongubwe's. There's a Mapongubwe here on the Botswana side, there's a Mapongubwe on the South African side, and there's a Mapongubwe on the Zimbabwean side, and all of them are, have massive archaeological history which I find so fascinating and apparently the Botswana side the guys moved over to South Africa the South African kingdom and they fell apart and uh, some of them moved back into Zimbabwe and some of them moved back here um, but yeah just fascinating here he has two years two graves here <laughs> What would look like just two piles of rocks to you and I is actually a burial site, so I'm going to just give it some birth. We made it to the top. Was it? And behind me, I think it's called the Maulutsi River, the river of elephants in Stwana. I believe. I stand to be corrected, so please feel free to add a comment if I'm wrong. But have a look at this view. And I tell you, guys, wow, 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 wow. We're so high up that a pair of Varro eagles nest just on the side of the cliff. And um, I think that's rather special. We're high up and we're overlooking this river. Have a look at this.
Okay. So, that's one of those experiences that you really come away from and just think, wow, how worth it. It's about a 20, 20, 25 minute walk. I'm not going to say hike. Uh, you know, easy going. It's very hot. But spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. And um, overlooking the river. Really, really beautiful. But I think the most interesting thing for me is the the archaeological significance that these places have. And to have one in the Thule Wilderness Reserve, wow, absolutely spectacular, special. And uh, yeah, just doing the walk back to the car now. I'm looking forward to just grabbing that water of mine. A bit parched. Definitely deserve a cold refreshment. The last game drive of the trip. Bittersweet really, but let's go and see if we can find those lions.
Simply put, our experiences were totally unexpected and yet, to date, has become one of the most memorable ones that I have had. With exceptional wild encounters from the back of a safari vehicle. Have a look at their website below to find out more and reach out to Julie for your next magic and intimate adventure. You won't experience anything quite like it. And without a doubt, you'll be glad you visited this special place with friends and family. This truly is Botswana's best kept secret and I look forward to visiting new friends made at the Thule Wilderness Reserve. you've enjoyed this epic adventure that I shared with my mate Ed. Please leave a comment, share and all that good stuff down below. It helps the YouTuber logarithms and grows the show. Till the next adventure, I'm Ryan Crocker. Stay safe, keep trucking and I'll see you out there. Cheers for now. A big thank you to the Patreons that are active and support the 4x4 Ventures channel. This show is supported by Indieflate and Lacey.